Hello, welcome to this video, translating Act 4, Scene 1 of William Shakespeare's Macbeth. On the left-hand side of the screen, on the green box, is the original text. The modern translation, which I'll be reading today, is in the blue. And if you follow the link in the description, you can pick up the ebook, which contains everything you see. So, Act 4, Scene 1 is in a cavern, and in the middle of the cavern is a boiling cauldron. There's thunder, and in come the three witches, the first of whom says, The tabby cat has meowed three times. And the second one says, The hedgehog has whined four times. And the third one says, The beast with woman's body and animal's wings cries, It's time, it's time. The first witch then says, Around the cauldron we go, Throw in some poisoned internal organs. A toad who sat under a cold rock for 31 days, sweating out venom, goes in first and then they all say together those famous lines double double toil and trouble fire burn and cauldron bubble the second witch says next goes a slice of snake from the marshes into the cauldron to boil and bake after that we put in the eye of a newt and the toe of a frog some wool from a bat and the tongue of a dog the forked tongue from an adder and a blind worm's sting a lizard's leg and a baby owl's wing all this goes in for a powerful spell that is as terrible as if it were made in hell. And then again they all say double double toil and trouble fire burn and cauldron bubble. The third witch says I'm going to put in a scale from a dragon's skin, the tooth from a wolf, the witch's mummified skin, the stomach and gullet of a shark, root of hemlock which has been dug up at night, the liver of a Jew who swears against God, bile from a goat's stomach and cuttings from the yew tree, gotten during an eclipse, a Turk's nose, a Tartar's lips, the finger of a baby who died in childbirth to a prostitute. Make this potion thick and sticky, and to it will add a tiger's entrails. And they all say, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn, and cauldron bubble. The second witch then says, cool the mixture with the blood from a baboon, and then the potion is almost ready. And at this point, Hecate comes in, it says, oh, well done, I congratulate you on the efforts you've gone to. All of you will share the rewards from it. Now let's gather around the cauldron and sing our spell like magical beings in a ring, enchanting everything that goes in. And Hecate goes off. The second witch says, by the tingling sensation in my thumbs, I think something wicked is coming this way. Doors open your locks for whoever it is that knocks. And of course, in comes Macbeth. Who says, how are you now, you secret black and midnight hags? What are you doing? And they say, something there is no name for. And Macbeth then says, I call on you by the powers that rule you to answer my questions. However, it is you who know the answers. Even if it means you unleash ferocious winds that knock down churches and whip up foamy waves that, draw, that drown sailors at sea. Even if it destroys crops and knocks down trees, even if it flattens castles, bringing them down upon the heads of the people inside, even if, if it brings palaces and pyramids to the ground, even if it turns everything in nature upside down, tell me what I want to know. The first witch says, speak. The second says, demand. And the third one says, we'll answer. And the first one says, tell us if you would prefer us to tell you these answers, or if you want to hear it from our masters. Macbeth says, call them, let me see them. And the first witch says, pour in the blood of a pig that has eaten her nine babies. Add to it the sweat of a man hanged on the gallows and throw it into the flame. And they all say, come, spirits, high or low, and show what you can do. And there's thunder, and the first apparition, an armed head. Macbeth says, tell me, you mysterious power. And the first witch says, he can read your mind, there's no need to speak, just listen. And the first apparition speaks, Macbeth, 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 beware Macduff, beware the thane of Fife, dismiss me enough. And off he goes. Macbeth says, whatever you are, for your warning I thank you. You've guessed my fear correctly, but tell me something else. The first witch says he will not be commanded to do anything. He is another stronger than the first. Thunder, second apparition, a bloody child appears and says, Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Macbeth says, if I had three ears, I would hear you more. The second apparition says, be violent, bold and stubborn. Laugh at the power of men, because no one that has been born of a woman can hurt Macbeth. Then off he goes. Macbeth says, then let Macduff live. What do I have to fear from him? 
But nevertheless, I'll make doubly sure and swear upon my life that Macduff will not live. That way I can rest my fears and sleep well at night. Then there's more thunder, and along comes the third apparition, a child crowned with a tree in his hand. What is this that looks like the young son of a king and wears a crown upon his head? All, all the witches say, listen, but don't talk to it, and the third apparition speaks. Have the courage of a lion and pay no attention to those who worry or fret or plot against you, Macbeth. Macbeth can never be defeated until Great Burnham Wood marches to Dunsinane Hill. Now, what that means is until the woods move, until the forest moves to Dunsinane Hill. So in other words, that seems impossible, doesn't it? And that encourages Macbeth, who says, well, that will never happen. Who has such control over the forest that they can make the tree pick up its roots from the ground? These are good tidings, good rebellion against me. Good rebellion against me won't rise until Burnham Wood does and I will live to be king for the rest of my natural life. But my heart aches to know one more thing. Tell me if you can, will Banquo's children ever be kings of, in Scotland? So you can see, you know, Macbeth feels like he's being reassured, but he won't drop it. He wants more and more information. And of course, the witches say, don't ask anything else. But Macbeth says, I demand you answer me. Deny me and let an eternal curse fall on you all. Let me know. Why is the cauldron sinking? And what is that music? The first witch says, show. Second one says, show. Third one says, show. And they all say, show him and let it upset him. Come like shadows and leave in the same way. And then they see eight kings, the last with a glass in his hand, and the ghost of Banquo is behind them. Macbeth says, you are too much like the ghost of Banquo, down with you. Your crown burns my eyeballs. Your blonde hair is just like the hair of the spirit that came before you. This third is just like the first two, filthy hags. Why did you show me this? A fourth, my eyes. What, will this line of kings stretch out to the end of the world? Another one, a seventh. I don't want to see any more, but still the eighth one appears, who carries a mirror in which I can see many more of these apparitions, and some of them carry double balls and triple scepters, telling me they are king of more than one country. Horrible sight! Now I see that it is true. They are really the descendants of Banquo, because his blood-spattered face is smiling at me, and he's pointing at them to show they're his. And then the apparitions vanish. What, is this really true? The first witch says, yes, sir, all of this is true, but why are you so surprised? Come, sisters, let's cheer him up and show him the best of our talents. I'll create a spell to make the air create music, while the rest of you dance around for him, so that this great king can say that we performed well for him. And then there's music, and the witches do a dance. Macbeth says, where are they? Gone? Let this harmful hour stand as a cursed day in the calendar. Come in, you who is outside. And Lennox enters. Lennox says, What does your majesty want me to do? And Macbeth says, Did you see the weird sister? Lennox says, No, my lord. Macbeth asks, Did they not pass by you? And Lennox says, No, indeed, my lord. Macbeth says, The air itself on which they fly is infected and damned by anyone who trusts them. I heard horses galloping by. Who was it? Lennox says, It is two or three messengers, my lord. They have come to bring you a message. Macduff has fled to England. Macbeth says, fled to England. Lennox says, yes, my good lord. Macbeth says, time you have anticipated my terrible plans. Unless someone carries out their plans, the second they think of them, time overtakes them and they never get round to it. From this moment on, the very second I think of or feel something, I will carry it out there and then. And I shall begin right the instant, right this instant, by raiding Macduff's castle, seizing the town of Fife and killing his wife, his children and anyone else unfortunate enough to be in line to his inheritance. No more talking and boasting like a fool. I'll do this before my resolve weakens. No more apparitions. Where are the messengers? Bring them to me.